Guerrier français, vous méritez cette parcelle de terre et la richesse. Et radical, cette vieille. In the year 1883, China became embroiled in the Sino-French War due to its efforts to protect its vassal state, Vietnam, resulting in a conflict with the French Third Republic. Welcome to Oriental Frames. Thank you for your watching and subscribing. In 1885, France invaded Guangxi, China, resulting in the fall of the Jinan Pass and the scattering of Qing soldiers in disarray. The French troops displayed banners of humiliation towards China, even shamelessly posing for photographs while standing on the bodies of the fallen. The French colonial forces, including the Black Foreign Legion, engaged in acts of arson, killing, and looting, committing heinous deeds. They herded captured civilians together, and at the command of their black leader, innocent people turned into victims of gunfire, a grim scene from the reality of the Sino-French War. However, during that time, the Qing dynasty's government was isolated and decayed, and the invasion of foreign races was met with intense fear. Many believed Westerners to be malevolent demons from hell. The invaders were seen as impervious, with bullets and blades failing to harm them. Most of the stationed soldiers fled without a fight, allowing the French to break through the Jinning Pass. Remarkably, the court was devoid of capable leaders. While the majority of civil and military officials advocated for seeking peace, only General Feng Zizai, aged over 70, was determined to expel the French. Without seeking official position or wealth, he composed a sincere petition, requesting permission from the court to lead an expedition. Yet, despite his strong character, General Feng faced opposition from Li Hongzhang, who dismissed him as merely seeking attention, exploiting the public sentiment. Even Empress Dowager Cixi paid no attention. In the end, it was through the recommendation of Governor-General of Liangguang, Peng Yulin, that Feng Zizai was reluctantly granted a position in defense. Without the support of the court, General Feng had to rely on his prestige to gather people and horses. Many patriotic individuals readily joined, resulting in the recruitment of over 2,000 volunteers. French General Negrier was also assembling his forces, issuing arrogant proclamations to his soldiers. De la dynastie Chine a déclaré la guerre. Français, votre Et des lois plus nobles, comme celles de peuples orientaux, vous méritez cette parcelle de terre et la richesse. Pour propager la civilisation française, pour votre loi. As the French forces launched another assault, the feeble and ineffective Qing soldiers could only retreat in disarray. However, with the support of heavy machine guns, the French gave the Qing soldiers no opportunity to escape, resulting in a field of corpses. The town of Longlin was almost handed over on a silver platter. Upon receiving the battle report, General Feng made the decision to take the initiative and engage, despite the overwhelming disparity in weaponry between the two sides. General Feng's son, Feng Shixian, proposed a strategy, concentrate the main forces to eliminate a portion of the foreign legion first, gradually expanding the gains. That night, when the Black Cavalry attempted to launch a surprise attack on the camp, they were intercepted by General Feng's troops midway. Cloaked figures wielding ropes swiftly passed through, eliminating black soldiers with swift blade strikes. An officer attempted to escape, but at Feng Shixian's shout, the soldiers rushed forward, forcing the officer into a desperate situation, and he fell into a trap. General Feng achieved his first victory. Simultaneously, internal disputes within the Qing dynasty were alleviated, and the supply and provisions for General Feng's troops were treated more fairly. In order to instill confidence in his soldiers and the people, and to prove that foreigners were just as vulnerable as anyone else, General Feng decided to engage in a one-on-one -on -one duel with the black officer. In order to dispel people's fear of foreigners, General Feng was willing to fight without regret, even if it meant losing his life on the battlefield. Due to his advanced age, after a few rounds, General Feng found himself at a disadvantage. The black officer had a clear upper hand in terms of physical strength, forcing General Feng to rely on cunning to achieve victory. The black officer launched another attack on General Feng. The black officer dodged, delivering a powerful punch to General Feng. Aiming to end General Feng's life, just when everything seemed to hang by a thread, a subordinate swiftly intervened to halt the combat. General Feng's son was ready to step in and take his father's place, but the general's unwavering pride prevented him from yielding to the aggressor. The black officer ultimately met his demise at the hands of General Feng, boosting the morale of the entire army, leading to resounding cheers. Many civilians were inspired and signed up to join the military, 